volunteer status. What do partners have to do in order to be approved to work in remote CPS classrooms? How can partners ensure that their programs are following CPS's remote learning policies and guidelines? All partners should still have tier designation in case of a pod or school community needing to switch back to fully remote if there were to be a COVID-19 case in the pod. The framework assigns CPS vendors with a tier status of zero, one, or two. The tier status indicates the level of interaction organizations may have with staff, students, and families during remote learning. CPS notified vendors of their tier status on May 6, 2020. Tier zero, interaction between the vendor organization and CPS students or families is not permitted at this time because the scope of services cannot be executed remotely. However, interaction with CPS staff is permitted. Tier one, remote learning partner. Conditional interaction with CPS staff, students, and families is permitted. Tier two, core partner, Conditional interaction with CPS staff, students, and families is permitted. Please see the chart below for more information. To obtain a tier designation from the Department of Procurement, a school principal must sponsor your designation and must complete this remote learning tier request form. Please note, the linked form is only accessible via CPS email accounts. The majority of partners will fall under a tier one designation. Receiving your tier designation should take approximately three to four business days. Your tier one designation will be applicable to any school that identifies your services. All partners planning to work remotely with CPS schools should be familiar with the acceptable use policy for vendors. Key parts of this policy include the following. Google Meet is the only acceptable platform for video conferencing students. Arts partners will be able to join CPS Google Meet video conferences using any email address. They will also be able to share their screens.